Hello everyone. How are you all? I hope you all are safe and healthy in this pandemic. Today we are going to start chapter number 2 of chemistry grade 9. The name of the chapter is Is matter around us pure? Dear students, what do you mean by a pure substance? When we go to grocery shop you must have seen some packets on which it is written pure ghee pure atta pure milk pure honey etc for a common man the pure substance are those substances which is free from any kind of impurity or which is free from any kind of adulteration but is this true in context of chemistry actually not why not because in chemistry the pure substances are made up of only one kind of matter so come in this chapter we will learn some more about pure substances and mixture pure substance a sample of matter containing only one kind of matter is called pure substance like for example ice calcium oxide hcl all the elements they all are pure substance because they contain only one kind of matter in them whereas a sample of matter containing two or more substances is called mixture for example sugar solution soil tea coal air blood they all consist of two or more substances in them therefore they are called to be as mixture milk is a mixture of water fat protein sugar etc so milk cannot be said to be as a pure substance milk is a mixture now we will learn about the classification of matter we have already studied that matter can be classified as solid liquid and gas on the basis of its physical state but on the basis of composition matter can be classified as pure substances and mixture the pure substances can be further classified as element and compound whereas the mixture can be further classified as homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture Now we will learn about the physical and chemical properties of matter. The properties such as color, smell, freezing point, boiling point, density, hardness, malleability, ductility, attraction or repulsion toward magnet, they all are the physical property of a mat matter. they can be observed without changing the chemical composition of the matter for example when i say that the gold has yellow color then yellow color is the physical property of matter whereas uh, the properties like uh, combustibility toxicity stability in a given environment the reaction with water the reaction with acid the ph of a substance they all are the chemical properties of a matter which can be only observed and measured by performing a chemical reaction okay so i hope this is clear to you all what is the physical and chemical properties of matter now we will read about pure substances a pure substance is a form of matter matter means it can be solid liquid or gas uh, so pure substance is a form of matter that has constant chemical composition and characteristic properties for example we will take the easiest example of water h2o H2O is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom which is bonded chemically. The pure substance is always made up of only one kind of particle. Particle means atoms or ions or molecules. So pure substance can be made up of only one kind of atom or only one kind of ion or only one kind of molecule. some examples are diamond gold water salt refined sugar etc they all are pure substance 
but sea water if we will uh, talk about sea water then it is not a pure substance why because it has many dissolved substances in it similarly petrol petrol is also not a pure substance because it is a mixture of many hydrocarbons so now we will talk about the characteristic of pure substances they are homogeneous throughout the pure substance is homogeneous the pure substance has constant appearance constant appearance of color and density throughout the sample pure substance always display a very sharp melting and boiling points for example if we will talk about water the boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade at one atmospheric pressure and these properties like melting and boiling points are used to check the purity of a solid and liquid respectively now this pure substances can be classified as element and compound first we will talk about element elements are the pure substance which cannot be broken down into simpler chemical substances by any physical means or any ordinary chemical means that means elements are made up of atoms of the same type for example a carbon oxygen nitrogen they are all elements an element can be a solid liquid or gas for example gas uh, gold and silver are solid mercury is a liquid and hydrogen and oxygen are gases they all are elements the element exists as either atom or molecule for example gold gold exists as atom whereas nitrogen nitrogen always exists as molecule next here you can see the relative abundance of various elements in the earth's crust till november 2011 a total of 118 elements were identified out of which 92 elements were natural these elements are widely distributed in the earth's crust either in free state or in combined state you can very easily see here through the pie chart that oxygen is the most abundant element in the earth's crust followed by silicon all these known elements are further divided into metals non-metals and metalloids so let us start with the properties of metals yes we know that metals are solid at room temperature except mercury which is liquid at room temperature they are lustrous they have shiny surface mostly all the metals are hard except the metals like sodium and potassium which are so soft that uh, it can be cut with the help of a knife metals are malleable yes metals are ductile they can be drawn into wire they have very high melting and boiling points metals are sonorous yes they make a ringing sound when struck and they are the good conductor of heat and electricity we know that silver is the best conductor of electricity followed by copper and aluminium there are some exception in this also that lead and mercury they are poor conductors of electricity aluminium is the most abundant metal on the earth's crust followed by iron and calcium now we will talk about non-metals 10 non-metals are solid one is liquid that is bromine and 11 are gases we know that the non-metals are non-lustrous they do not have shine except iodine iodine which is gray violet solid at room temperature and has shiny surface non-metals are generally soft except diamond which is an allotropic form of carbon and is the hardest known substance on the earth 
non metals are non malleable they are non ductile they have low melting and boiling points they have very low density also non metals are poor conductor of heat and electricity that is they are insulator of electricity except graphite graphite is a good conductor of electricity and yes they are non sonorous they do not produce any ringing sound when struck some common example of non metals are uh, carbon sulfur phosphorus nitrogen chlorine bromine iodine etc now uh, some elements are there which show the, the properties of metals as well as of non metals and these type of elements are called semi metals or metalloids for example boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony they all are metalloids uh met most of the elements are metal as we have learned most elements are solid at room temperature 11 elements such as oxygen nitrogen helium hydrogen they are gases at room temperature and two elements one is mercury and another one is bromine they are liquid at room temperature mercury is a metal and bromine is a non metal they both are liquid at room temperature i hope it is clear till here to everyone now we will read about compound compounds are also pure substance like element elements are also pure substances compounds are also pure substances the difference is that the chemical compound is a pure substance which is formed by chemical combination of two or more different element in a definite proportion by mass when two elements or more than two elements combine together chemically then they form compounds the compound consists of atoms of two or more different different elements which are bound together chemically for example water in water you can see two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen is chemically combined similarly in carbon dioxide it is a compound containing a uh, carbon carbon atom and two oxygen atom so we can say that the characteristic properties of compounds are as follows a chemical compound is formed by chemical combination of two or more elements in a fixed ratio by mass for example in water a uh, two elements of hydrogen and oxygen are present in the ratio of 1 is to 8 by mass and this ratio always remains the same whether you obtain water from uh, uh, any well or any river or you prepare water in laboratory by the chemical combination of hydrogen and oxygen this ratio will never change second point is that a pure compound is homogeneous that means it has the properties same properties throughout and hence it is homogeneous next is that a component of compound cannot be separated by any physical method the physical and chemical property of a compound are totally different from those of the combining elements for example again we will take the example of water water is made up of hydrogen atom and oxygen atom okay but the property of water is very much different from the properties of hydrogen and oxygen we all know that uh, hydrogen is combustible and oxygen is also a supporter of combustion but we use water to stop the fire so this shows that the combining elements lose their identity and properties in their compounds here oxygen and hydrogen is losing their property is losing their identity when they are forming compound to form water molecule 
नेक्स्ट इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कंपाउंड इज अ कॉम्पैनिड बाय अब्जॉर्बशन और इवोल्यूशन ऑफ हीट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन ऑक्सीजन एंड कार्बन कंबाइन दे फॉर्म कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एज वेल एज दे प्रोड्यूस हीट सिमिलरली वेन नाइट्रोजन ऑक्सीजन कंबाइन टूगेदर दे नीड सम हीट फॉर फॉर्मिंग नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड now we will read about the types of compound they are mainly of two types uh, depending upon their sources it can be classified into inorganic and organic compounds the compound which are obtained from non living thing such as rocks soil mineral uh, some examples are uh, chalk baking soda carbon dioxide uh, washing soda sodium chloride they all are inorganic compound because they are ob obtained from non living sources whereas the compounds which are generally obtained from living sources such as from any plant from any animal they are known as organic compound for example the oil the fat protein alcohol cooking gas they all are organic compound because they are obtained from plant and animals the organic compounds are often called carbon compound as all the organic compound contain carbon as an essential constituent element in them now based on the properties the compound can also be classified as acid bases and salts and based on the type of bonding the compounds are mainly of two types ionic and covalent ionic compound and covalent compound i hope this is all clear to you all till here uh, this is all for this video we will read in detail about the mixture in our next video till then bye bye and keep reading thank you for watching